All right, everybody, welcome to another match in the movie Battlegrounds. Uh, my name is Sandy the Sandman Robinson. I am a first time host and first time judge in this particular arena. Uh, but I have three of our participants in this uh, fatal five way match that's a two parter at the moment. Um, and so I'm going to do some introductions first here and then we'll get right into our first question. Uh, I'll introduce from left to right on my screen. First up here, we've got Henry the Punisher Sanchez. How you doing today, buddy? Um, I'm really nervous about this. This is my first debate in a while. I've uh, I've won both of my debates pretty easily, so I'm curious to see that now that I have two tough competitors, how 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 I'll fare if if my other two are flukes or if uh, you know I'm actually the truth. So we'll see. Well, I've listened to you argue, so I uh, I have faith that you're going to be able to to back up your points on this in this match for sure. <laughs> Our next combatant here in uh, this movie battleground matchup is Linus, the Livewire Babcock. Linus, how you doing today? I'm doing well. It's been a while since I've been in this arena since the title match loss, sadly, but mm. I'm here right now, and I don't really have much to lose, so I'm going to take a different approach for this match have a lot of fun with it, not get stressed out with the answers, and just play the game fairly, and hopefully it's going to be a good time for all. Awesome. That sounds like a good plan. And last but certainly not least, uh, somebody I have actually had the pleasure of watching during these matches before, uh, and he needs no introduction from me, but we're going to give it to him anyway. Chance, the Titan, Ellison, how are you doing today, my friend? I'm doing good. You know, my first triple threat I've done a five way before, but never done, done a match like this. Uh, he's two great competitors, and I'm really, really excited to get this match done. All right. So, you guys all know how it works. I'll give just a real basic rundown of how it's uh, how it's going to start off. We're going to give you guys a little bit of time at the beginning for each question to uh, to give us your opening statement. Uh, and then we're going to have an open forum where you guys are going to defend and discuss your guys' uh, choices. And then we'll do a little bit of an ending, uh, an, an ending commentary here for you guys. Just a, one more chance to to give me some some ideas of why I should pick you guys for the win on that question. All right, guys. So right now we're gonna we've got three players in this uh, first part of the of the fatal five way. So what's gonna happen is is that it's the first person to three points. So the first person who gets two points automatically moves into the next uh in, into the next uh the next grouping uh which will then hopefully we'll be able to get to the next person who gets two points which will automatically eliminate one person at that point um always remember that each one of the competitors has a one minute extension period that they can use and other than that i think we're good to go Everybody ready? Solid. Yep. Ready? All right. All right, guys. For your first question, um, we the question is, if the first <clears throat> Avengers was remade, who would, your roster, who would be in your roster? You can keep – it's got to be kept to between five and seven characters, and the only characters that can be repeated are Captain America, Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor. So let's start off and we'll go in the exact order that I introduced people. So Henry, you're up first. Alrighty. So with the Avengers, I we're allowed some repeats. And given that um, we're gonna do some repeats, I'm gonna keep the similar plot lines with Loki being the villain and do a little bit of change ups. So I'm going to revolve that around Loki and I want to keep that more in the sky and also keep it more uh, fun because Loki, he has his mischief, so I want to have some magic involved. So I'm going to have Doctor Strange, which is going to be new. I'm going to keep Iron Man because he's just he's just the most popular, and at this point you can't not have a Marvel movie without Iron Man until in the future. We'll, we'll see how, how they play that. I'm going to have Spider-Man because Spider-Man is just so popular that if he they would have had the rights to Spider-Man before, Back then, I'm pretty sure he would have been a part of the original um, Avengers roster anyway. Plus, the dynamic between Tony Stark and Peter Parker is just so much fun in this MCU approach, so I would like to keep that. Because Loki is the villain, I'm going to still have Thor, because that's his brother, and that's that's the whole point Loki's involved. But my, my twist on that is I'm going to involve Valkyrie instead, 
I'm gonna, I, I love the involvement of Valkyrie in Thor Ragnarok, so I'm going to introduce her earlier in the franchise, and I'm going to have her be a part of this movie. And then last but not least, I'm going to have Hulk. So uh, a quick little setup. I'm going to have the Iron Man movie. I'm going to have a Spider-Man movie. I'm going to have a Doctor Strange movie, and I'm going to have a Thor movie. So I'm going to have four movies before this Avengers movie. So the Avengers will be the fifth movie in my MCU in phase one. And then I'm, I'm going to um, include the Hulk as they did in Avengers and, and pretend the Incredible Hulk movie didn't exist. Because as we all know, the Hulk is best when he's not the center of his own movie. And he's definitely a good side plot. So I definitely am going to have him there. And that is going to be my roster. And I'm going to start off with that for my Avengers. Awesome. Okay, so, wait, so really, really quick, you have Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Thor, Spider-Man, Hulk, and Valkyrie? Yes, yep. six. Okay, I want to make, make sure I had that right. Yeah, those are great. Uh, those are great picks, Henry. It's uh, when I saw the list and I saw that you had Valkyrie on there, I was a little surprised. But then when I saw the the Thor Valkyrie combination there, I was like, oh, okay, I got you on this one. So, uh, okay, let's uh, Linus. You're going to be up next. Tell me about what your uh, lineup consists of. All right, I'm someone that trusts Kevin Feige a lot, so I think I would mostly keep the universe the same for how we started it with uh, two Iron Man's Thor, Captain America. Then the Avengers, and then I kept Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and Hulk as the four because I think those are the four big mainstays of the Marvel Universe at that time. And I added Scarlet Witch because I think she's a kick-ass female character who got amazing powers, and she can be more developed where in the second one it kind of feels like she's kind of thrown in for the most part, and we can kind of erase Quicksilver's existence because didn't really matter that much going into the later films then this is where uh you might be like you picked the extremely obvious ones howard the duck and captain britain are also on my roster sorry for going so basic there all right that's your 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 actual lineup was uh, was the the one that i looked at first and went the one that you would have also chosen? Uh, it, it would have been close. It would have definitely been close. I, I love the fact that you threw Captain Britain in there, so that's that's great. Um, but let's not uh, let's not end off here. Let's go over to our uh, the the last person to give his list here. Chance, give me your list. Give me some reasons. Okay, so uh, looking at the Avengers line, I really like the original Avengers line, but I thought that was a really good combination of, all char- of different kinds of characters. But I wanted to kind of switch it up, and I thought, hey, you know, it worked in the comics, so why not just why not just you know start with that off the bat? So yeah, I do want to, I do want to. I thought it was great to make the first villain, the first Avengers, uh, Loki, which kind of started in the comics. So I'm keeping that. So obviously, I'm keeping Thor, and then uh, I'm mad we still start this universe with, uh, you know. Uh, Iron Man, so I'm keeping him. Then I also have Hulk because, I mean, for Big Ten movies, you, I think you get him off in right off the bat because he's one of the more recognizable Marvel characters. And I have those three, and then I also have Ant Man and the Wasp, which were two founding members of the Avengers. And my Ant Man is not Scott Lang, it is Hank Pym because that kind of, I think, introducing the dynamic of Hank Pym and Janet Van Dyne early on changes the outlook of the universe. Like we can get like a more accurate Ultron story. We can do all sorts of things with those two characters. And I think adding them in the beginning adds a really interesting dynamic. So I'm sticking just with those, uh, I believe I have five. I'm sticking with those five. All right. And just to just and and like you said, you're the only competitor that's stuck with just five competitors. Everybody else went a little bit higher with their with their totals. Uh, but that's a good uh, those are good groups, guys. Uh, now we're going to jump into the second portion of this uh, this question. And it's going to be you guys this five minute free for all sort of deal. You guys can start off uh, whenever you want. So with my with auto, let's automatically start with Linus. Linus, the thing with the Avengers is you want popularity. You have Howard the Duck and Captain Riv. You have two characters that people don't know that well or don't care about. Howard the Duck is one of the worst movies in Marvel history and comic book history. So seeing that on the lineup is not going to get butts in C. And then you got you got guys like me. You got even though I threw Doctor Strange in there early and Valkyrie, which she's going to be a side character, which is an adjacent to Thor, so that's not a big deal. But I still have Spider Man, Iron Man, Hulk, and Thor. And even if we're still sticking with Iron. 
Spider-Man not being a popular character like in the old days, we still have Spider-Man, which is one of the most famous comic book characters, not just Marvel characters. And you have Thor when you think of power and you have Hulk. And I also threw the Valkyrie in there because I want to I want to keep I want to have that planet Hulk option available. So if you have the Valkyrie, I want to have a three way love um, triangle, which is going to have the, 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 the drama between Thor and Hulk, because that was one of my favorite parts of Thor Ragnarok was their fight. But I felt like they didn't we didn't get enough of that. So if you add a little love triangle in there without overdoing it and being like Pearl Harbor, but just having enough with Valkyrie, Banner and Thor, that's going to add a little tension between there because that's Wait, one that, of the best parts. Love triangle between, between those three? She's yeah. with the Hulk? Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be yeah. a lot of fun because then when you eventually get that planet Hulk situation, that's going to have a dynamic between Thor and Hulk that's just going to go crazy. And then Valkyrie, she's still badass. She's attractive. She's, she can, she can handle herself. She can, she, she, you know, she's still a goddess or she's a Valkyrie. So she's a lot more powerful than Black Widow. So it has more reason to go have her go up against Loki. So it makes more sense. And then you have Spider Man, Iron Man that are their dynamic. And you have Doctor Strange, uh, magic against you know the God of Mischief. That's just so much fun. So I got that's a perfect lineup to go up against Loki. Okay, but I think hey, the issue with your lineup, the issue both your lineups. First of all, on to tackle lines first. Yeah, uh, Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch, Howard the Duck, and Captain. First of all, Captain Britain. Marvel Comics doesn't give a shit about Captain Britain. No, so you he's expect, cool. You expect the audience he can fly. To try he's got a cool costume. But like, what? Like, you know, like Captain, Captain Britain's a completely unrecognizable character, even by comic standards. Oh, even like, yeah, Ant, Ant Man's oh, recognizable to the modern viewers. Be like, oh, look, the oh, but he's recognizable to comic fans. The comic fans, he is recognizable. Captain Britain is gonna seem like, it doesn't like Captain Britain. Yeah, but, but if you go with Hank Pym, and Hank Pym and his wife, they're gonna be old. They're gonna be already based on retirement. So you're, it's like you're no, already not, handing no, off no, the Avengers in the first movie. I'm having them young. I'm not having like old Michael Douglas Hank Pym. I'm having you know, I'm, I'm, I'm completely rewriting Phase One to where Hank Pym. And Janet Van Dyne are young. They're like, they're like, they're so, like they're so young is Hank Pym going to be the only Ant Man in the movies, or are you going to pass it down? Because if you're going to pass it down, you're uh, going to jump so many down, years. Later down the line, because in, in the comics, like when Scott but, that, but, Hank Pym but in a span of 10 years, old. are you really going to pass down the Ant Man uh, name art in a span of 10 years? Like, I, people I are already complaining yes. that even though Iron, even though Robert Downey Jr. wants to leave as um, Iron Man and Chris Evans wants to leave as Captain America, 10 years still isn't enough for that to really make sense. So if you're already trying to pass it down no, in 10 I, years, I, I, that's too quick. That's not going to give them enough character development or it's going to be right out the door and if they're supposed to be a founding member of the avengers that's that's pretty much just like tearing down the avengers for no point and it's just it's just going to ruin things it's like you're adding stuff into future movies and not worried about this movie here specifically so you're, no, you're starting like, what, off what, what, what does it matter with the way it is hank what hank pym what does it matter if it's hank pym or scott lang i picked I hank pym because he is the OG, he's the original he was he is at one point. He's one of the smartest guys in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Even smarter than Tony Stark. Even smarter than Reed Richards, arguably. So we need. So we need someone like him. Yeah, but you. But you have a. You have a Hank Pym. There is automatically yeah. going to diminish Iron Man, and Iron Man clearly is why? one of the favorites in the MCU. I think it's kind of like they're going to go ahead. They're going to cancel why? the other why? out. Why? So, why? Contribu Hank contribution. Hank because it's, it's, it's different than with uh, I, with my Tony Stark and Doctor Strange because Doctor Strange does magic and he, he's a wizard. So they're 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 smarts are on different levels. So they they contrast each other while also balancing each other. Whereas Hank Pym and Iron Man are pretty much the same character. So having them as your two leads are just gonna pretty much no, not true. No, not, no, not, not at all. Have Hank Pym have is Scott Lang, just like he said. His brain alone. Iron Man. Iron Man. He inherited a company. He had, he had money. He had that to fall back on. Like Iron Man, essentially, like if a rich guy became a superhero. Hank Pym, essentially, like a really just super genius. A superhero because that's how he got to where he is. But I want to touch on your like you have Doctor Strange. You like are you are you introducing Doctor Strange in another movie? Yeah, he's gonna this? have his own solo movie. But but biggest problem I think with you both of yours, I think both of yours are super overpowered. I think you want you want this to feel you want this to feel big. You want this to feel how? like the, like it has <laughs> space behind it. Introducing I, Doctor I, I, Strange, the the God of the Marvel Cinematic he's Universe. Around make, your, make your lineup way too overpowered, way too off the bat. The Avengers like you're gonna have the, the most powerful people coming together. together. Yeah, yeah, but it, but, it, but, in, but in my movie, Doctor Strange is still gonna. He's only gonna have one movie. I'm not gonna rush him into his powers like it like in the current MCU. Doctor Strange, by the time we saw him in Infinity War, without spoilers, he's really good. But he's mastered his craft. Where in my Avengers, he's still going to be new to it because he's just going to be he's barely going to get into the sorcery. But I think Matt is way too end. jarring into in phase one. I think you have to say that for no, because in my in my next phase, line. I'm going to enter the Guardians. I'm going to enter the, the all those other well, more scale to get closer to the Thanos because. No yeah, matter what, we're gonna we're gonna lead to Thanos. So, so that that's what the, I'm worried the, about the first, more later. But the, Thor, the, the first Thor movie, like, I think that should be focused on Thor trying to introduce Valkyrie. I think it's gonna diminish that. I don't think Valkyrie has a place. Like, you're saying, it's saying, um, fucking, you're saying Ant Man's copy of Tony Stark. Valkyrie is just a female, is just a, a female Thor. 
Like you, yeah, you, but, you but it's going to have a better elements. dynamic, and it's going to be more relevant to Loki as a character. Where you have the Wasp, who she you haven't even mentioned her yet in this five minutes, so she's going to be there for no reason. And plus, well, out, 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 of, out, of, out of all of our characters, right? is much out of all of our lineups, mine is going to sell the best toys. You have Spider Man, you have Iron Man, you have Doctor Strange. Well, what Strange, do you think I'm selling toys? Yeah, yeah, when you, when you right. think, yeah, but when you think of when you're setting up a lineup, you're setting up toys, you're getting money in seat, you're looking at the finances. Mine's going to have the you got the most money from a marketing purposes. As well I'm looking as bringing a, best, a great story. value. Uh, I'm looking at the artistic value of the movie. I'm looking at everything as a whole. Because if you're looking like at the way, way that they approach things, are you, are you telling me Iron that they don't think really they don't have that? As well. If he's just joining the Avengers right when the Avengers start up. Yeah, you need to establish that adult boy. dynamic like he before wants you to join it. Then he's just joining it when it first starts out. That's how it works so perfectly in the newer films in Spider-Man Homecoming. He looked up to Iron Man. But if he's just joining him like right as the Avengers are starting up, I think that whole dynamic is kind of thrown away for the most part. Yeah, you need no, to establish that whole adult no, point of view in the special. Marvel Cinematic Universe off the bat before you introduce a teenager into that mess. Exactly. He's not He's not going to be a big part. He's going to be a learning process. He's going to be like an intern to um, Iron so Man. You're, because, so, like you're gonna, you said, so you're going to bring in Spider-Man and re meet your well game to the, the supporting character. Like, well, no, like, character you're gonna meet, like, like, like you said, like you said with, with, my, with my movie, it's point. too grand scale. Having Spider-Man not be the amazing Spider-Man that he's going to be and still being an intern, it's going to have it's going to scale it down a little bit and that's going to balance it out so it's not overpowering. And then you have to have Hulk in there because everyone loves the, the dynamic between Loki and Hulk and that, that experience. Plus I said that love triangle and then it's going to build up future for planet hulk which we're going to want you want planet hulk you're going to want your secret wars you're going to have all these storylines built up early so they can definitely build you know towards the end when you have 10 movies down the line so you don't have a bunch of fluff but like i think Thor you, the I Dark think you literally have valkyrie only in here to set up to set up a love triangle because like, like aside from that you haven't really brought her up anything else so she's not really adding much because she's the going to you want to have that that badass female, but it's it's more it's more important and more and smarter to have a Valkyrie than a Black Widow because she's more small scale. When you have guys like Loki, and how is she? Has, she has Guardians. She has like superhuman powers. How is that smaller scale? Black Widow is definitely more sc small scale than yeah, Valkyrie. Yeah, Black, 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 Black Widow is, is than Valkyrie. Later when I know that's Thor what I'm saying. Has to be humble. Valkyrie's going, going to be Valkyrie, bigger scale, so it's it's more it's more balanced for her to fight I Loki. Think, whereas, I think you need you need you know, you only have one as Guardian. You only have one as Guardian in life. I think Valkyrie. You, you don't you don't want to lean too heavily. To one side, especially that's why I had issues with yours because your is way too powerful. Issue of development is having her in there too early. Develop it kind of takes away from you, the you have, you have Doctor, you have Doctor Hulk, Henry, you have Doctor Strange, Hulk, and Valkyrie, and Thor. All in your lineup. That is way too powerful to start your Avengers off. You need something smaller scale. You need Doc, something like I said. Doctor Strange hasn't mastered his craft yet. Thor, but even then, that's still ma that is still magic that he can still learn. That makes him super powerful. Yeah, but you hit your. He's going up against Loki, who's the god of mischief. He's already doing magic like stuff, and he has the but Tesseract, like, so like, he has all the stuff that he can do. Begin with, he can't fight. Like, why not? Like, he like even like Doctor Strange that is like depowered. We it's, wouldn't go it's, in the fight. It's for you character long. You're gonna have long Iron Man. Go, you're gonna have long Iron long Man. Long you're gonna have Doctor Strange bringing humility to Iron Man. You're gonna have Iron Man bringing um, leadership prowess to Doctor Strange. And okay. I'm, I'm, have... fighting, I'm fighting Henry too much. I want to talk about Lions real quick. Was yeah, so time? you have Sandy, uh, what that time? Jesus character. Uh, you have Scarlet Witch who you got to say it. Sandy. All she doesn't add much. What really adds to the movie is the fact her vision, which you have not mentioned, is there being. Time. Whew, that was fun. Jesus. <laughs> One 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 minute one minute gentlemen's agreement. We completely just turned on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Only for this one, because this one, this one, there's no way you can. All the other ones yeah. they make sense, but not this one. I, I, this yeah. one, there's so many characters. Also, it's hard to kind of. Yeah, you got to try and get it out the bat. I did want to give you guys some extra time, hoping that uh, hoping that Linus was going to bully his way in there and shut you guys up for a second. I'll bully my way in the ending. Stuff, so, <laughs> um, but uh, no. So I guess. Uh, those were all good, well-founded arguments, guys. Uh, you know, I really do you think that you guys, most for the most part, did defend you, even though like, we could barely hear Linus. Every once in a while, he'd throw one out there that I could grab. So <laughs> I'm glad that you guys were able to, to get your points across on that one. So we're going to go the opposite direction this time around. Uh, we're going to start with uh, your, guys's, uh, your guys' closing statements, and we'll start with Linus first. All right. Okay, so you guys look at my list and you think it's silly and uh, maybe not market appeal, but there's a reason I chose Howard Duck, the duck more so than a jokey thing. It's because Thor, the character, sometimes has trouble working, fitting into the real world. So having the relationship that you see in Infinity War, not to spoil much, but he has a him and Rocket Raccoon have uh, amazing chemistry together. So having Thor and Thor Ragnarok with all these strange characters that are unhuman, Thor has amazing chemistry with those together. And 
Howard the Duck and Thor, I can just imagine an amazing relationship that the two of them having just quips back and forth. And it's fun having a character in there that's maybe not so overpowered, but is there for more of a silly aspect to say and add more of the comedic light tone to the film. I think the first Avengers is honestly a great film. And with Captain Britain, I think there's a great part you can fit him in. The whole scene where Loki's at the concert, he can be there. It's a different part of the world and he can be there. And Captain Britain is just a really cool character. He can fly. And I think he would fit in well, especially adding more of a world dimension to it, where it's just not all in New York like the original one was. And the Avengers are supposed to be the most powerful group of people coming together. And it works well because they are the most powerful people coming together to save the universe. So even if they are a little OP, that is necessary for the film. Ty. Iron Man. Okay. All right, let's go over to let's go over to Chance. All right, so Henry's Henry's lineup: you have Doctor Strange, Thor, Hulk, Valkyrie. That is way too powerful to just start the Avengers off. Linus, you have uh, the original four, which I get, but Scarlet Witch, she's not really interesting on her own. I don't know how you're gonna, I don't know what you're going to do with her by herself. Howard the Duck, which is immediately going to bring this movie down because people like there's already a warped perception of that character i don't think he adds much to the, to the avengers at all and captain britain who if you want to carry through it can fly which pretty much all you pretty much all you brought up captain britain that there are like 10 characters that can fly that are way better than captain britain so i feel like my lineup you want this to feel you want this to feel like it has taste you want it to feel grim so you need a lineup that feels a little more grounded per se you don't want it to be too overly powerful you want this to feel like okay there is a possibility they could lose because they don't have all the power all, all the power they could defeat them so i think starting off with iron man hulk thor and man the wasp i think that's a really good lineup. it's a good mix of all, it's a good mix of different kinds of powers it's a good mix of different uh, kind of back and good mix of stakes, and I think that's a great jumping off point for uh, the Avengers and for the Marvel Cinematic Universe because you, this is a lineup that feels that feels smaller, feels smaller scale, and it feel like, there are gonna be points where I feel like this lineup could lose because they're not powerful enough, which is what you need in an Avengers movie. All right, perfect. Thanks, Chance. Uh, Henry, you get the last word on this particular one. <clears throat> okay, so as we've already touched on with Linus, his is just not interesting. He just doesn't have enough enough there to bring butts into the seats, which is going to uh, effectively ruin the rest of the franchise. And when you have the first Avengers movie come together, that's what you want. You've We've waited so long. We've waited all of our lives to see a Marvel movie, uh, an Avengers movie, and his is just, just not going to cut it. Chances is pretty much the original um, Avengers movie plus Ant Man and the Wasp instead of Hawkeye and, and uh, Black Widow. So hey, his, minus his, cap, minus cap. I don't have cap in my lineup. Okay, well, m ultimately it's the same movie still, regardless. So he doesn't have many changes, and and, and you just have a bunch of people that are just going to be pr the, pretty much all their skills are just fighting and punching. And when you're going up against the God of Mischief, that's that's you're, that's not powerful enough. You say mine's too powerful, yours isn't powerful enough. And then when you have mine, you have you have um, Thor. He's going up against his brother. So in in his movie, he's developed a relationship with Valkyrie, but he's he's neglecting her because he's more focus on his brother because as we know in the first Thor Loki's not the villain so he's finally getting that evil side of Thor of uh, Loki so his attention's going there so that's when Banner and Valkyrie can develop their own thing which is going to lead later on to that's going to you know build, slowly build have the building blocks for that relationship you have Doctor Strange who's not all, all all the way going to be ready with his powers so his, his he's not good him, him and Loki will be a good battle and then you also have the egos of Stephen Strange and Robert Downey Jr. going back together but they also they they're like positive and negative at the same exact time where it Hank Pym and Tony Stark are pretty much the exact same person. Then you have Spider-Man who is that ground level. He's that, is that, that he's, he's ultimately you want him to be the pretty much the face of the Avengers. So you start him off early as the low and then just have him slowly go up as time goes by over a span of 10 years. So when you have mine, it just builds up the franchise as a whole and it's just the best overall movie for an Avengers movie. Time. All right, guys. That was some that was some serious debating on your guys' teams over here. Um, I don't know if you guys were able to tell, but I was furiously scribbling notes down over here because yeah. uh, you guys were going balls deep on that one. So I really appreciate it. Uh, Hashtag balls deep. That's there, there. There you go. Okay, so when I look at this question, if the first Avengers was remade, who would be your roster? So that's what I'm thinking about. I need to know why you wanted to pick this particular roster and what it does for the Avengers and the MCU going forward. Um, Linus, unfortunately, I think that uh, just due to the fact that uh, you, you had uh, that you that you had Howard on there, um, and, and not not that I'm not a fan of Captain Britain because I am, 
uh, but he's very unknown to to the majority of of, of, the, of the public, especially the general movie going audience. Uh, I, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to remove you from contention on this one right away. How um, dare you? Sorry about that. <laughs> but, uh, I'm the next two, the Chance and Henry, you guys had you guys had very very similar ideas. You wanted characters that were going to work out um, well with one another. Um, but the person that I'm going to give the point to on this particular question is Henry. Henry wins the point on this one, um, not because I believe that his group of people were any less strong than Chance's. Uh, I really liked the way Henry was world building um, throughout his argument. Um, that was what the the first Avengers was. It was the, cum com the accumulation of, of a specific amount of movies and then bang into the Avengers. And then we world builded more after that one. And then we saw more in Avengers Age of Ultron and then of course into Infinity War. Um, so for, for that reason and that reason only because I do enjoy both picks for, for characters. But the world building aspect of it is what pushed me over the edge onto Henry's side on that one. Thank you, Sandy. Good job. That was that was tough, man. Palms are sweaty. I'm already sweating. All right, guys. So that question uh, that question is now done and over with. Uh, so I want to thank all of our competitors for for explaining their issues on that one and congratulating Henry on his first point of the match. Mm -hmm. We're going to move right into question number two here, and this is a really fun one. I think we're going to get some good, good answers on this one. Question number two. Pitch an adaptation of a video game into a movie that hasn't been done yet. Now, do you guys want me to tell you guys what each one of you said, or do you guys just want to come in and do it when I call your name? One at a time. Yeah. All right. That's what I like to hear. All right. So I am going to start off with Linus this time around. So Linus, when you're ready, you go ahead with your pick and start your opening statement. I'm going to preface this statement a little bit because I'm not a huge video game player. I just I've always been into movies and TV. I never really got into the video game game side of the entertainment, but I know about video game movies and I know why most of them don't work. And I think it's mostly because they have such a strict narrative that they have to follow. And you're playing the game as the video game character, and you see it, and it's just a different experience translating that into film. Now, the video game I chose which was Legend of Zelda, which I think would work great in the film industry for multiple ways, as we need another good fantasy film. And that's the perfect set-off point for a great fantasy film. It has a great strong protagonist, a great narrative, and it's just fun overall. It's a property that pretty much everyone knows. And honestly, the storyline is there's one there, but you don't need to strictly follow it per se. It's Link, Zelda's captured, he goes after her. It's honestly, you can take this story in many directions, which I think is great for a video game movie. Where in other ones, if you mess with the source material, the fans will get very mad at you. And in this one, I think you could take it in many directions, have use go off any of the games, go off any of the characters, and just make a fantastic film with it. All right, perfect. Thanks very much for that. Let's jump over to let's jump over to Chance this time around. Chance, let's give uh, let's give them your answer to this question, and uh, your uh, one minute starts now. Okay, I'm a pretty avid video game player myself. I haven't I haven't they like, felt I fallen behind because you know college and all that. I don't have PS4 here, but uh, even even then, like when a video game grabs me, it grabbed me. And one of I think the greatest video games of all time. A little game called Red Dead Redemption. Now, in this game, you play as an outlaw. His name is John Marston, who uh, he's trying to. Uh, he gets, uh, you know, courted by the government to go and track members of his old gang uh, in order to bring them in, or else, or else he can't see his family again. Which is a which is a great jumping off point for a movie. Now, the game. Now, I admit the game is very broad. The game is very broad. So I don't want to focus on the whole game. I'd rather focus on when, when you first start the game. The way it's pitched to you, you're only going after this one guy. You don't even you don't even know about the whole the whole rest of the game. So the way I see this going is you focus on the beginning part of the game where you're just going after this one guy, Bill Williamson, and essentially the movie is just going to be John Marston 
meeting all these different kinds of people in town that are going to help him in his quest to take down to get to capture one of his former, you know, one of one of his former uh, associates, gang members, Bill Williamson. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much for that chance. All right. And Henry, with the final answer to this particular question, you start now. So with video game movies, you have uh like like Linus said, you have a lot of strict fan bases to where if you don't if you don't do it exactly right, that they're gonna complain. And if you do it too close um to the to the fan base, then the general audience is not going to get it. So the game that I picked is is a storyline that is a well known property, but as far as the story goes, the, you, there's it's it's pretty broad in the sense of it's like other movies and it's like movies that are well done and if and if you take it in a different approach like I am genre wise it's going to be unique in its own right so I'm going with Grand Theft Auto and I'm going to set it up in the Grand Theft Auto 4 storyline so I'm going to have a main character who is going to be have Russian ties and he's kind of struggling in his life. His cousin um, offers him a, an, an opportunity, and he gets kind of brought into the mobster life, and then things just go haywire from there. So as we know, the gangster movies are done really well. You have movies like John Wick, where it's like action and crazy, gritty, grounded in, like, in a city, and you don't have to worry about large scale and the actual mafia side of it. You can handle just you know one guy and you know a battle with a boss, and that that's good. You can go in different approaches, and... It's just a lot of fun um, seeing people struggle with their with their debts and the mafia and just having that that look over your shoulder attitude the the personnel or uh, concept the entire time and also like I said genre wise I'm I'm gonna have this be be a dark comedy as well because I'm I'm gonna have I'm gonna have really good character moments and you're really gonna get to know the characters and you're gonna have a lot of fun because they're doing a lot of weird and crazy stuff as we know in the Grand Theft Auto franchise. Time awesome perfect. All right, guys. Um, great intros for all of those things. I've played every single one of these games at one point in time in uh, in my in my life. So uh, I'm a fan of all three of them. So it's going to be up to you guys to to choose who's going to walk away with this point. Uh, so your five minutes is going to start, and I'm going to be a bit more strict this time around. Fair enough. Five minutes is going to start now. My, fir my okay, first. Okay, first of all, oh, Henry, I will say that. I think the problem with Grand Theft Auto movie, the best parts of the game will not translate to movie because exactly. the best parts are not the story. The best parts are where you can go and all do all this great shit, like start shooting up with cops, like just start shooting up with cops and die, beat up hookers, go to strip clubs. It's, it's all the stuff you can do outside of the story. The best part of Grand Theft Auto. No one cares the about part. the story. No, part do exactly. not, no one cares about the story of Grand Theft Auto. The best parts of that game will not translate to a movie. And on Linus, you're gonna have, to make a Legend of Zelda movie, you're going to have to do some major rewrites. That game's very too broad. That game's way too broad. You have that's a main exactly character. What you need for a video game. It's a no, you know, but you have a main you character a that does not that's speak. The other ones not I, feel like, I feel like Legend of Zelda is something that will work better on a smaller scale. Something that will work better as like a mini, like a series on HBO or like Netflix or some shit. Yeah, plus Linus with no, yours, I think it needs yours is just a ripoff of like Shrek, you know, saving the princess, or you know, Sleeping Beauty it's saving every, the princess. It's every like, fantasy movie we've ever seen before, where it's guy saves chick. That is it. Yeah. And, and, and plus, other than, way, other than Lord, Lord of the Rings, work. how do fantasy movies do? Work. Prince of Persia. Work. How works. do fantasy that movies works. do aside aside from uh, Lord of the Rings? Prince of Persia, Warcraft, which that is exactly. a video game movie, but it's a fantasy movie. All these movies, they're, 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 if they're not failures, they're not major successes, and they're not building franchises. So it, you're automatically off to a bad start. you got a character who most people think the main character's name is Zelda, and it's not even Link. So you're already, you're already off to a bad start. People Plus, are going like, Link, in, Link and they're going to be says, confused. Like, Link never says a goddamn word in those games. So you're going yeah, so to have to automatically you know, have what type of personality. You don't change stuff in video game movies? Is he going to be stale? Exactly is he going to be wooden? Is, is it funny? Is it, you know, you don't even know. Is it a romantic comedy? Like, you is have no idea what this is. It's too broad. Excuse me, princess. Yeah, it's too broad I and too generic. That is, that is a bit, terrible formula for a video game movie. Films, Mainstream appeal. Grand Theft Auto is the very fun game, but that kind of brings out the worst of humanity in many parts. Yeah, the it actually does. The Grand Theft Auto right now, the worst, worst having that See, out, the approach I'm going to take with it good. is I'm going to have it, I'm going to have it as Matthew Matthew Vaughn's going to be my director with Jason Statham. So a lot of the lot of the shoot 'em up type of stuff that's going to be dream sequences, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Wait, and, but Jason is not even right for that part. You need you need someone who can do a convincing Russian accent. That's not Jason Statham. Jason Statham is going to be able to do a Russian failing. accent easy. He's his acting has gotten so Wait, much better in the last couple years. 
He doesn't need to. He's he's already on that side of the spectrum. That so he's gonna change. He's gonna be able to. He's not gonna need the experience. He's gonna pull off a Russian accent. On the same side of the spectrum. He's got that deep voice already. He's gonna be able to pull it off. I don't know and, if the accent's the most important part. I just don't think that's going to work. But James, in cinema. But I think it stays. As as yeah, but, you're, but I'm gonna I'm gonna have all the shoot 'em up stuff as dream sequences because it's gonna be like the devil and the angel on his shoulders. Whenever when his cousin brings him in, he's gonna think of all the pros and cons, and he's gonna have dream sequences of the shoot 'em up style, the lifestyle, flashbacks to what have people have done in the past. So you're still gonna you're still gonna have those Easter eggs of what is fun in the Grand Theft Auto games, but like you said, we people don't care about the story, so that's why we're gonna get them into the story. We're gonna get them to the rush, the monster lifestyle. Plus, as you know, we're we're hanging off the coattails of John Wick, and we're hanging off the coattails of movies like Goodfellas, Casino, The Godfather, gangster movies. They but love neither that type of those stuff. Big budget action movies, though. I'm like, they, yeah, they didn't yeah, have. They didn't have, they didn't have it's not gonna be a big budget action movie. It's it's in it's in Liberty City. It's a small like scale city. It's not going all around the world. You're it's the actual car chases are within the dream sequences so there's only gonna be one or two in the but then movie what's the to shoot them up all, if it's all in a dream yeah, there's, there's no point calling the grand theft auto it's like it's like the focusing on the story like, the whole point of because the game you're still you're still, there's still gonna be missions there's still gonna be stealing cars system. and stuff so you're still gonna have that but i'm talking about like the shooting up cops you, you can still do the hookers in the real life so it's the pretty much the only thing of random shooting shooting civilians and shooting cops that's the only part that's going to be the dream that's only a little bit of a part of it plus the people going into this movie are going to be adults now when they were younger i look at Grand Theft Auto, I see Death Wish. Look minute. at all the backlash that movie got. The Grand Theft Auto is going to be the exact same thing. Yeah, that's but this is this gonna isn't good. That's the theaters. that's the point. That's the point of why I said this it's going to be the devil on the show. We have a main character struggling with with the with it's it's getting he's being tempted into that, but he's he's trying to fight it, and he's also he has the mob the the mob on his back, so they're pressuring him into that lifestyle. So he is that's why you're covering it for the for fan service of the dream sequences, but it's not really happening. So you're showing it's not really happening, and it's also our our main character struggling with not liking that. So you're going to have Rob. Also, you're gonna have, I gotta talk about Lions real quick. Lions, Wait, let's get, like, I, know, I know you want to beat, beat Lions to crap, but I gotta go it again because like, the, like big, big fighter fantasies don't work unless like you're trying. Plus, plus, plus no, have every, every, everything with chance real quick. Western, chance real quick. The, right, the only, the only, the only popular, uh, for sure. the only popular westerns we've had are movie are, are yeah. ones from big directors. Tarantino with Django and Chain and, and True Grit like from the Coen Brothers. So that's the only reason. West, yeah, the Magnificent. No, that's not. That, 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 that doesn't work. Western doesn't work. work. So people don't much care much much about Western. That, that, that genre no is dated. Nobody name. cares. Nobody cares. Western no, you made, no, doesn't work like, not, nothing is more powerful than word of mouth. So you get a good director, like you get someone like Dave McKenzie, who can make this, who can make this work, Western work. You tell a great story. Hate the that the came out. Movie uh, film get. fans loved it, but the modern audience was not that. Yeah, it's not going to be popular worldwide. So it's that's the same thing with a video game movie. Maybe the the fans of the video game are okay, like, but the mass audience are not going to like it. So it's just going to have the same formula. Video game movie was to be the best video game movie. A question is the best video game movie. Yeah, successful as a whole. As a whole. So successful as a movie. Mine, mine at least is going to have the mobster genre, which is still um does well. People will turn out for good westerns. Look at something. I think you said time. No, they won't. Time. 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 You guys got to be paying attention to his fingers. Yeah. Sorry. Hold up a fist when it's time. <laughs> I've been doing it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah but yell. that's what I'm saying. Fist is yeah. time. You're holding up this and that, like time. Yeah, fist is time. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Ooh, this one's way wide open. With no time to prepare, this one's been fun. <laughs> yeah, this is great. This is great. <laughs> All right. All right. This one's tough for me, guys. We still uh, have you, our closing arguments. And you yep. still have closing arguments to go. So. I'm going to give you guys each you guys' closing statements, and we will start off this time with Henry. Henry, go ahead. Okay. So like I pretty much um, touched on Linus and shut it down, you have a fantasy movie with a broad concept and a generic plot. So the broad concept is going to be a hellhole when it comes to the writing room because it's just going to be a mess. When you have video game movies in general with that concept, it's already going to be struggling. And when you have fantasy movies that's not named Lord of the Rings specifically, that's already a mess. So Linus is unfortunately is not going to work because it's either going to be too generic or it's going to be too broad and it's not going to appeal to a mass audience. And then when you have um, chances, his, his is a Western. It's, that that genre is not popular enough. It's it's outdated. You can you can bring in whoever you want, but at that point, if you're you're trying to your video game movies, ultimately are the point is to be a franchise, even if it's just a trilogy or a two part parter. But you're never going to get more than one, and you're definitely not going to make enough money if people don't care. So you can get you can get a Clint Eastwood or you know a big name like that back in the day, and maybe. But nowadays, there's not there's no 
main stars that's going to lead a Western. And then when you have my movie, that's a mob movie. It's a mobster movie. So regardless if it's video game or not, regardless of the story or not, people are interested in mob movies. And your your issue with like the Death, Death Wish and the gun violence, like I said, your your main character is struggling with it. Whereas in a movie like Death Wish, he's in, he's embracing it. He's purposely tr- out to kill people, and it's it's embracing gun violence. Where in my movie, you have a, a character with an internal struggle against it, and then you can still have all the fan service. He can still go to nightclubs. He can still pick up prostitutes because he's struggling getting into that lifestyle, whether it's real or fake. We don't know because that's part of the story and a struggle. And then you, my, I, I didn't get to bring this up, but his cousin's going to be played by Peter Stormare is going to bring him in, so he does a good Russian accent. And then the the or no, I'm sorry. His cousin's going to be Mickey Rourke, who does who who did a whether you liked him or not in Iron Man two, he did a good accent and he was an, an intriguing character who had just not enough to do. So you're getting him a second chance, and Peter Stormare is going to be the villain and uh, Dmitry uh, Roskolov. So you have a lot of big name actors, and it's and it's directed by Matthew Vaughn, so it's just going to be a lot of fun. And you have that mobster genre, oh, which is just boom, butts and seats. All right, Linus, let's get you up next. All right. To touch upon uh, Henry's, I still don't think that would work in this day of age, the audience. Maybe if it was 10 so years ago, before all the stuff that's going on now, we could see that work. And even if the genre, you're, the way you're taking it where it's all dreams, I think the audience would not be happy with that. The Grand Theft Auto fans would not be happy that their game is being kind of made light into a movie. So I don't know what audience would be interested in that movie. And with West, uh, Red Dead Redemption, I think it's an interesting story and us film fans would be interested in. But having a mainstream of appeal we want a successful video game movie and that's what legend of zelda could be yes the saving the princess story has been told a lot but it works for the most part fantasy films need and video game films can be saved with one film because it's simple and it can work it's a broad concept you can get directors in to tell their story with great characters that would bring people into audience where where one was can be offensive and wouldn't work in this time and one westerns are not really appearing to the modern audience where legend of zelda Zelda could be the most successful video game film of all time just because it's so broad and the concept would work and it's appealing to most everyone even if you're not a video game fan like myself Perfect. Thanks. All right. Chance, last word. You get it. All right. So Grand Theft Auto, the best parts of the video game will not translate to a movie. It glorifies it glorifies pretty much the worst manning, which is all the crime stuff. Like nobody wants to go to a movie and watch that, especially if it's playing the Grand Theft Auto name on that. Look at Death Wish. Legend of Zelda, that is way too way, is way too broad concept to tackle. You know, a main character does not speak, which gonna have way too which can have way too much character to define to himself. And also be better at as many series. Red Dead Redemption. You guys, your, your biggest argument against mine was the fact that it's not be popular. The question was not what's going to be the most popular video game. What's going to be the best? And Red Dead Redemption have a great story. You have a great uh, character people can empathize with, which is why I think none of you have attacked mine because you know mine will be the best. And also, uh, you want to say why this game is simple? Look at Magnus in Seven in 2016. That movie made a good amount of money for being a western. It doesn't matter what the genre is. If you make a good movie, that people respond to. You, people will turn out. So you get someone like Dave McKenzie attached to it that can make a tell, like tell a great story within this Red Dead Redemption universe. People will go see it if it's good, and it's still it's going to be the best movie out of all three of these. All right, thanks, you guys. I appreciate those last final comments on there. It did not help me at all. Yeah, this one, I, I have no idea where this one's going to go. The first one, I, I had an idea that I could win, but this one, no idea. <laughs> it's tough. All right. Give me a quick second here. Just going to think about this for a second. It's no problem. There's something you said in your, in your closing chance that I wish I would have specifically brought up, but yeah. It's, yeah, me too. It's the fact of hindsight sometimes. So I'm glad. So I'm glad I had to close last. Yeah. Okay. So here I am, ready to make the decision on the second question, and I had to reread the question, and that's what helped me out with this particular answer mm-hmm. or this point. Pitch an adaptation of a video game into a movie that hasn't been done. Not a good video game into a good movie not a bad video game into a good movie or a bad video game into a good or bad movie, a video game property into a movie that hasn't been done yet. In this particular case, I valued all three choices of video games. I am out of all three of these video games. I'm a huge legend of Zelda fan. 
So I, I, I do believe that there's a spot in, out there for it. Um, I'm not as big of a Grand Theft Auto fan because it's uh, it's not something that I was a, a big, big fan of. I don't like driving games that, that too much or, or running around and beating people up games. Um, but and 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 as a Western fan, not a you know particularly great at trivia when it comes to re- uh, westerns, but um, I do like uh, the westerns and I do like the the Red Dead Redemption storyline. Um, I just I don't think that I don't think that Grand Theft Auto, if it's made into a movie, will appeal to a wider. There'll be the, the, it'll it'll there'll be people that go out to it, but I just don't think that with the violence that's involved with it, I don't think people will see it on a, on a grander scale, which will then chalk it up to a, a failing franchise uh, right out of the gate. So unfortunately, Henry, this time around, I'm going to make yours the first one that I X out of there. Um, so right now it boils down to which video game movie out of these two that I think it, and I think that the best argument this time around went to chance. So chance gets the point in this one, just because I do believe and Henry, actually you helped improve his point. Uh, when you mentioned Tarantino, if Tarantino can make a couple of Westerns and make them successful in the box office and even Oscar worthy, um, then somebody could come in and do this. And, uh, and, and yeah, but he was saying David McKenzie, David McKenzie is yeah. not Tarantino. No. So <laughs> just because I disagree with his choice doesn't mean that somebody can't come in here and say, I can make this a good Western and, and move on to it. But based on uh, the arguments, he said David McKenzie. Just saying, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll tell you this right now. I'll t- I'll tell you this, Linus. You were close because mm-hmm. I I do think that because it has multiple chapters in the whole Legend of Zelda franchise, you could do Orc Arena of Time. You 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 know you you could do the, the, the all these different ones. And even if he doesn't speak, we've had characters before that don't speak all that much. And 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 our main characters. So, uh, but in this particular question, Chance gets the point here. All right. This next question. Whew, I hope you guys are prepared. All right. So. Question number three, guys. We just had an amazing question number two, which Chance ended up getting the point on that one. So right now, Henry has a point and Chance has a point. And Linus is still bringing up a a zero right now, but there's still plenty of questions left. So we have the third question, and it is most improved remake over the original. Uh, I love this question. None of the answers is the one that I would have picked, but uh, for my own. But you guys all have picked uh, your particular movies over their originals. So we are going to start this time with Chance. Okay, so we're looking at this movie. You have to. I think the biggest thing, the biggest improvement over the original, and that was that was kind of the biggest draw for me. So I ended up going with Steven Soderbergh's Ocean's Eleven. Now, the original Ocean's Eleven, like, upon rewatch, doesn't really hold up as much. And I don't think it's on the movie's fault. I just don't think. Like, big, exciting, like, crime heist throws were hard to do in 1960, which is why, like, he had all the all the charisma of the original, of the cast being the, the, first, Rat Pack, the first Rat Pack movie, uh, you know, Dean, Sammy, and Frank. So, yeah, like, they, they, they are great in the movie, but the movie itself doesn't really hold up. But then you fast forward to 2001, where Steven Soderbergh gives a crack at it, and he puts together a sleek action heist, heist comedy thriller. Uh, you have the great cast. You have George Clooney at his – George Clooney being as suave as he possibly can as Daniel Ocean. You have uh, Brad Pitt, Matt Damon, Julia Roberts, the band of my existence, Andy Garcia. You have a great – uh, you have a great crew. Like uh, by the end, of, like the crew is well remember on this one than the original Ocean's Eleven. And I think as far as just improvement over the original, this one stands out above just about any other remake. Nice, thank you very much for that chance. Let's go over to Henry next, and you know, with Henry's pick. All right. So when you think of 
a movie that is better than the original, you think of you first off want to think of the original. And if you can't think of the original as much, then automatically you're off to a good start. And when you think of the remake as not only a better movie than that movie, but a great movie on its own, one of uh one of the best movies from one of the considered one of the greatest directors of all time and a best picture winner and a best director winner. You can say their lifetime achievement awards regardless. That's that that's just hearsay. That's just, you know, by that's opinion. That's whatever you want to say. But The Departed is a 10 times better remake than Infernal Affairs cuz Infernal Affairs isn't even one of the best isn't even considered one of the best foreign movies, let alone a great movie as a whole because when you think of movies like Old Boy and City of God, they're not only one of the best foreign movies of all time, they're also some of the best movies of all time so infernal affairs isn't even that discussion and then the departed it is an amazing movie it it brings together a cast that it, that has an amazing story it is very it is very deep in story where um some of these other movies might not be so you know deep in story it has character moments it has action it has funny moments it is just it is pretty much multiple genres and it's a best picture winner so i mean that i don't want to harp on that too much because i'm not i don't want to make that to crush my argument but it's hard to you know say that a movie is not a better improvement than the original when the other one had no awards and no oscar even at contentious wasn't even for foreign film best picture and this one is best picture of all films so don't departed all right thanks for that henry all right linus let's go with your choice for this question i uh, probably chose one most people wouldn't think of and they might not even know there was original but um i went with frank oz's remake of little shop of horrors which i think definitely makes a uh, most improved version it might not be the best movies out of all the one argued here but i think improving from what the original did is definitely what this film does in many ways the cast is much better from what the story represents the having someone like frank oz who knows puppeteering well with audrey too is just much better choice for directing this film and the overall effects performances music is done much better when it was transformed with the 80s with frank oz and it's just a much better time for the film to come out when and it was improved in multiple ways awesome awesome great choices guys all three movies are are mm. actual favorites of mine so um I'm I'm actually looking forward to hearing who uh, who comes up with the better with the better debate on this one because it's a wide open field because these are great movies. So we are going to start we're going to start with Chance on this one. Chance is going to give us his his or no we're not we're going to actually go to the five minute round <laughs> and <What>? rookie rookie <laughs> I'm pay more attention and. All right, guys, so that, those were the opening statements. We are going to start off our five-minute round in right now. So the thing okay, with Ocean the thing Eleven. The thing about The Departed is the fact that, look, it's a Western adaptation that was made for people who don't like watching movies that have subtitles. Yeah. Like, 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 it's pretty much, you watch Infernal Affairs, it's the exact same movie. Like, he didn't really yeah, change really all that much. It's in Boston. A location. No, I that, that move, the movie is way different. It, it has a deeper plot. It has more compelling characters. The, the main character in Infernal Affairs, he's fine, but you don't you don't care for him. Like, Without without any spoilers, like just hypothetically, if he were to die at the end, you wouldn't care when you when you're leading um, main characters in the party. You're care you're worried either. about They're their all face. Really shitty, especially like in the end, where spoiler, it kind of becomes like a parody of a Crusade movie where they all just start killing each other. Like it it becomes like it did become like way off the rails by the end of the movie. Because and, when yeah, you, like, when you look like, at mobster movies, like I was talking earlier, that's the type of stuff that to do. You can never trust anybody. Everybody's out for themselves, and that showed the balls the of Scorsese that, 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 that he was that willing really to go happens. take that like, risk. You read about the threat of the organized crime that never really happened. That just way too always happened way. Too ridiculous, and like you even touched on it. That one, that only one best picture, that only one, one best picture, and best director because Martin Scorsese been snubbed. So no, that had times. nothing to do with. It. You can say that all you no, want. No, it has nothing to do with it. No, it has that nothing to do. With it. You could have said, you could have said the same thing if it's, if he won it for Raging Bull and said, oh well, he would have, he should have won it for Tax Driver, so we got no, for Raging Bull. Not. You can use that argument anytime. That is a bullshit argument, and that means nothing. When you look at Ocean Eleven, that movie, that is a character movie only. That is not an overall good movie. It has a how is it not an overall movie? It has a thin plot that you you only see no, one minor little heist at the beginning 
that that that's why most people when you ask them what oceans movie you like most people are gonna yeah. say 13 because you you get more from the characters no, they're no, more into yes you get more into the characters the story is more compelling in that first one you 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 see all of their uh tasks at the very beginning for like a second and then you and then you jump over to the main the main heist at the very end andy garcia's character is probably the best part of the movie because his character has a little bit of dimension to him but all the other ones they no, have they have their own things that, right. that movie that ocean, 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 i don't know how yeah, much yeah, Ocean's Eleven, oh, Steven Soderbergh. That would have been better as an HBO as an HBO series, and just see a series of heists building up. If, if, or if they did like the MCU, MCU, and did like a franchise. That movie where it's like, you, you oh, you have, you have the Danny the Ocean solo it's movie, you have the Brad Pitt solo like a movie. Film it's a movie where the they had not enough to do, and they're just doing little tidbits. And it's just you have nothing from the characters overall. You just have you just have Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Matt Damon, big names just do being themselves, and that's all it is. That's the only reason that movie's interesting, not because of the plot. So when you think of best movie and better improvement, you. So just and similar and just to touch on Little Shop Horde, just because that first one is so bad, the the, the remake it's is improvement. Okay. The new one is better. It is definitely yeah, but, improvement. but that's what improvement just like just means. like I say with this argument, anything when you say something's better, you can you can fall down one step, but that or you can fall down two steps, but if what you only fall down one step before, you're not you're not getting hurt that much more. It's not that much better. So just because it's better it's doesn't not that mean great. it's good. My movie is the best movie out of the three of these. It's not the balls the best original ending. The most flamboyant remake. They had to go retcon. They had to give it the happy end. Ending. You're annoyed by Audrey the whole time. You don't give you don't give a shit if she's happy by the end or not. Yeah, I had this. Well, that movie is dated. Oh, yeah, that movie is dated. And it, it's if you didn't watch it, it in the eighties, you're probably not even gonna, gonna like it nowadays. You're and then and my with my movie, if you didn't even know it was directed by Martin Scorsese and you didn't and you didn't even know any of his history, you still would have enjoyed that movie as a self because you got Leonardo DiCaprio's character it has depth to it. I don't think it's been in the top. In the top it's 10 not that different movies. from internal. No, it, it is. It is definitely in the top. The only reason people would say that you got Goodfellas. And all those, it's just because of nostalgia. Like, this isn't a come out the Martin Scorsese's best film. Hardest to be nominated for best foreign, best foreign feature. No, We're I'm just I'm just saying just the fact that nobody remembers that movie. That when you think of foreign movie. movies, you if you ask if you ask anybody, you think of yeah, what is the yeah, best foreign American movie. American nobody is going to say Infernal they Affairs. That is on the somebody one of the best foreign movie. movie. At least some people are might really like it. It's like, oh, it's just this is the same the exact thing that departed. Mars didn't change Jack Shiz for our story. He made it he made it more compelling. That's the part of a remake. He actually added dimension and depth to the characters and the story. It added weight to it. He took the story and moved it into a different area. I don't know how much of an improvement that is. It's better for American audience. There were stakes yes. to the story. Um, there are stakes um, in the original too. No, because yeah, they they're, 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 they're not interesting. You didn't care about the stakes anyway. Just a different you're, you're going about it, and they're just, for us they're just boring. Do. They're just if boring characters. Americans and they, were more interested in the foreign films. They would have loved and with the main there. character and his captain. That wasn't as interesting, and his part and his partner. It just wasn't. It just what you didn't care about any of those characters. Where in the Departed, it actually took its time. It's two and a half and hours long. Like, it took its time. It's an unnecessary remake, though. It's unnecessary. Eternal Affairs is fine. No, I don't think I don't think so. I think the fact that you build the interesting character with them. Yeah, you only see. Yeah, all you have all you have in your movies is characters. You don't have a story to it. No, you do. You're you're the type of movie trying to rip all the three biggest you don't think. That is the your 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 movie is like a DC movie. It it just clips here and there. It's clips here and there put together for an hour forty five. That's all it is. It's not all about building the. It's all about establishing just how how big this heist is. You have to have different angles because this is not easy. Yeah, but they but they didn't they didn't even dive deep into it. They 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 tease. It for like one second in in the middle, and then it jumped to the end. All there is is bare, pretty much a total of probably twenty minutes of heist. No, but no, and they do, they do fifteen of it is in the end. end. No, they spent they spent like I watched it last night. It's been like forty five minutes just prepping for this heist. But tell me how uh, intricate this is. How much everyone has to do? No time. Time. Uh, so sometimes I say time. And yeah, I think it's it just doesn't get through to you guys. Yeah, you sometimes, put the fist up. Sometimes yeah. I do it's, it's, it's cause I was it's cause I was talking at the time. That's my fault. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do the fist and it still doesn't matter. Sometimes I do both fists. <laughs> well, because sometimes you, you have the little box at the can bottom. You can't see you. Next time. You can't see you. That's right. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep my box on you right now. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh wait, no, i I'm right the stream. I can't, so I can't. So yeah. all right. Great arguments on all three accounts there, guys. You guys, uh, you guys really, really defended your guys' movies uh, to a point. You guys did more assaulting other people's movies <laughs> during this one uh, than the previous matches, so the, the previous questions. So I'm, I'm really happy about that one. You guys get your guys' one minute starting now, and we'll start with Linus. 
All right. I've grown up in a musical house for the most part. My dad is a huge musical fan. And the Little Shop of Horrors 80s movie is a much better adaptation than the 60s movie. It is way improved upon. And the 60s movie is pretty much forgotten about because the original one is so good. Internal Affairs honestly didn't need a remake. It is honestly great how it is. And The Departed, it just... Because American audiences aren't that proud to foreign films, so we wanted to bring it into an American audience. But Internal Affairs is a great film in and of itself. With Ocean's Eleven, that film doesn't even need to be a remake of Ocean's Eleven. It can just be its own heist film. It has no reason to be a remake for any reason. It, the one in the 60s is fun. It's enjoyable. It doesn't hold up as well. But just remaking it didn't even make much sense in the first place. And I don't know how much it improves upon, but it just kind of makes it in a different era, which doesn't really change that much. Where Little Shop of Horrors, the effects, the puppeteering, the director was perfect. The cast was perfect. They did not have the cast right. Steve Martin is the motorcycle dentist. Rick Moranis says Seymour. It's just a perfect cast. It fits perfectly. It adaptates the play perfectly. The music is done well. It finally like does a great adaptation. It might not hold up now, but it's way an improvement. And that's what the question is. What improves upon the original most? And Little Shop of Horrors is absolutely the one that improves the most. It might not be the best film out of these, but it's the most improved. All right. Good point that you made there. Um, Henry, you got a minute. Let's go into The Departed. Mm, chance gets to go last again. Okay, interesting. Okay. So, uh, yeah, it's all good. So, uh, the, once again, easy knock on Linus. His his movie is outdated. Nobody cares about either version. So you can you can say it's an improvement, but you know, say say I'm a terrible artist and I draw a picture, and Chance is a terrible, a little bit a better of an artist and he draws a picture and his is better, but still bad. It does it's an improvement, yes, but that doesn't mean it's the be- most improved out of all of these. So because night because it's probably the least best of the three movies. So it, that that that's got to hold some weight. And then when you have a uh, um, chances movie the original is fine like like line said it is just an updated version for the times it doesn't do anything much different as far as improving the quality it's just pretty much a remake like beat for beat in the sense of um, concepts you have a you have a pretty much a boring plot line you just have interesting characters when you actually um, um, dissect the story it's pretty bland most characters don't have much to do that that's that story would have been better if they would have set up the characters in the beginning and then built up in two and three which you end up getting and most people some people well, now i wouldn't say most because a lot of people like the first always in anything so that that's an argument but a lot of people do like 13 more than 11 because it has it's built up the characters more it's given them time and the story is a lot better with the departed like linus he just called he kept calling it internal affairs the movie's infernal affairs and people make that mistake all the time because of how I forgettable mean, that movie that, is so. and how how unimportant that story is and you have this movie it dives deeper into the characters and the story and it's more engaging and it's not just a um a a, 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 a recap of his uh career first for says we say internal because that's a word i'm like infernal i I have dyslexia if if people people uh uh, (laughs) properly spell uh bastards improperly spell bastards because um tarantino did because of how good the movie is so that that's a terrible argument all right. Well, that, that, that's, that's off the record. I didn't mean to count that. Like, I'm not sorry, my closing. Yet. Same. All right. So, uh, with our last uh, comment, and I do apologize if I went uh, with uh, with chance last last time. Uh, I will rectify that for the next question. Um, but chance, you've got your minute. Let's talk about Ocean's Eleven. Okay, so uh, Little Shop of Horrors, uh, that was a movie, then a musical, then a movie again. So the movie's more based on the musical, not based on the actual show. So that has more to owe to the actual musical, not on the movie itself. And as far as Infernal Affairs, Scorsese didn't change like much at all with the original story. And the reason that, that stands up more people than the original movie because it's foreign and people don't like watching movies where they have to read subtitles. Ocean's Love, I think, you're doing, I think you're doing a criminal injustice by like, just saying that it's a movie where... Uh, it's a movie where like it's like it's a thin plot and it's all into the characters. No, like they built they built out the crew. They you know so like they build out like each each crew member skill set. They build out the fact they build out the heist. They have stakes. You understand why they're doing it. It's a really complex it's a really complex plot that's make that's made really interesting to follow. And I think the fact that this stands out more to people than the original, despite the fact that it had Hollywood heavyweights at the time, Dean Martin, Frank Sinatra, Sandy Davis Jr., means that it stands out more than the original. And the fact that look, both of your movies like Elias movie is forgotten. Henry's movie is unknown because it's foreign because it's foreign. My movie is known in the pop culture like guys, and this one still stands about means, which means it is improved. They improve the pacing, they improve the way the story is told, and it's hands down the biggest improvement over the original of the three of these. Um, okay, so we're back, everybody. Thanks so much uh, for joining us for this question number three here. 
Um, I've uh, been doing a lot of a uh, lot of uh, searching for this one, and what it really boils down to is what is the better remake. Um, and for me, ha and you'd be surprised that I've actually seen the Little Shop of Horrors, the 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 old version uh, and the new version, and because there are a couple people not mentioning any names, Drew <laughs> Henry. Uh, that have made me um, watch Infernal Affairs. Uh, so I have recently watched that one too. And of course, of course, I've seen both of the Oceans movies uh, a lot of the times. But I think the one that is the, the most deserving of the point and the most deserving of the title of best remake of a movie is The Departed. And Henry gets the point on this one. Uh, Linus, you were really close on this one. Ocean's Eleven to me was the one that, yeah, you had a stellar cast in the, 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 the Frank Sinatra version. You had a stellar cast in the George Clooney version. The story and the heists were pretty much identical throughout it. Um, the fact that, uh, you know, it was Scorsese's song. You know that 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 uh, you know that he finally won for, and say whatever you want about that it was a uh, honorary you know award because he should have won multiple times before, I, which I agree of. He did win for this one, and that's uh, uh, to me that means it's a great film no matter what, and it gets the point on this one. Okay, okay guys, we are back, and we just had a killer question number three, which. Uh, Henry was able to come away with that point, and in doing that, he has moved himself all the way to question number six when we get down to, or question number, whatever the last question will be. <laughs> um, and so right now, we've got Linus and Chance fighting it out for that last spot to fight, uh, to face off against Henry at the end here. So we're going to jump right into the questions. Uh, but first, I'm going to get uh, Henry's opinion on how everything how he th saw things coming up on that. Uh, I, I've been so nervous on this, and I and I, I just don't know where this can go. Chance is up 1-0, but Linus has proven that he's willing to take some risks with these, so maybe he's going to have some curveballs. And given that we uh, didn't share any answers with this one, maybe maybe he'll catch uh, Chance off guard, and we can, uh, you know, we'll see what happens. I'm very curious. I I am as well. It's it is going to be very very interesting. I'm going to tell you that right now. Um, okay, Linus and Chance, are you guys ready for this? Yes. All right, so your question number four is, who is the best choice to replace Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man? You can either recast Tony Stark, use a current MCU character as Iron Man, or pitch a new character to take on the role. And we will start with Chance. Okay, so when looking at this, look, I love Robert Downey Jr. Stark. He's my favorite. He's my favorite performance in the entire of the MCU. And you know, when looking at this question, I thought who could who could who could also play Tony Stark. And then I realized something: nobody, nobody can replace Robert Downey Jr. Tony Stark. He is perfect for that role. There is nobody that is, it doesn't matter who takes over that mantle of Tony Stark. It's going to be a thankless job. So I thought, you know what? Let's just move away from Tony Stark. And I'm going to have a different character take up Mantle, someone who took up Mantle in the comics, and that is Eddie March. Eddie March is a character who's pretty much the opposite of Tony Stark. Like, he's someone, like, he's not he's not a super genius. He didn't come from money. And he actually, like, he, there's a small storyline where, like, he had a blood clot in his brain. He thought he was dying. And so he just wanted to do as much good as possible. And which led him to taking, what led him to a job of Stark Industries, which led him to taking over the mantle of Iron Man. I think it's a really interesting dynamic to introduce to the Avengers, to this character. And my cast for this character is Lakeith Stanfield. Who Lakeith Stanfield, you may recognize from Get Out, uh, or Get Out, or from the show Atlanta, or from Short Term 12, or the upcoming movie Sorry to Bother You, which I'm really looking forward to. I think he's a multi fast I think he's a multi fastly talented actor, and I think he could. Really, land. I think him and Ed, as Eddie March could land a really interesting, interesting dynamic to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. All right, time. Thanks so much for that, Chance. Uh, really, really great, uh, great uh, opposition here. Um, Linus, your question, uh, your or your answer for question number four is. This is a answer that you might be kind of confused with as 
a character is already sh- so beloved as another character, but we see Robert Downey Jr. is such a mainstay and everyone loves him currently to have him just disappear without us being fully introduced and fully falling in love with the new character. I don't think works well for the universe as in the current MCU, Robert Downey Jr. has been mentoring Peter Parker played by Tom Holland. So when Iron Man steps out of the cowl or takes the mask off, I think Peter Parker should be the one to put it back on. There are, other characters like Miles Morales who can take over the Spider-Man mantle that audience have been dying to see in the Spider-Man mantle. And having Peter Parker as Iron Man would work perfectly as he's growing up to the role. That's who he wanted to be. You look at the younger at the Iron Man 2. He's supposedly the kid that's watching Iron Man. He wants to be Iron Man. That's his dream. He wanted to be an Avengers. He wants to be like Mr. Stark. This is who he's going to be. He's going to do the Iron Man mantle better. And he's the perfect place to lead the Avengers now. All right, perfect. Thank you very, very much for that. I appreciate that. Um, okay, guys, we've been through this for four, for three questions now. You guys know what's coming up next. You guys got a five minute round here to start in. Yeah. Okay, so the problem right, with so- Peter Parker, I feel like, like if, you, if they make Peter Parker Iron Man, it's going to feel like the MCU is really trying not to come up with new ideas for new superheroes. Like, essentially. It's, we have Tom Holland Spider Man. I love Tom Holland Spider Man. I want He's been in the Iron Man Spider-Man. suit. He's in the Iron Spider Man suit, which is basically pretty much an Iron Man suit. It is but a that's mark. Not, that's what he still, says. He's okay for the Spider Man. He's not Iron Man. Like I want my Iron Man to say, I he want Iron Man and Spider Man. He could be. We have other people. Well, it's not so that they're running out of characters. There are infinite Marvel characters you can choose for. That but is like, not the but issue. Like, even I even then, like, the audience there, there's, so, to... there's so many different Spider-Man storylines that they can tackle before just making Peter Parker Iron, uh, Iron Man for no reason. Like, there's no reason just to go straight into making him Iron Man. Who says that Tony Stark's going to step away from being Spider-Man right this moment? We don't know that. So there could be more time for the mentorship to grow. In my pitch, I'm going to have the mentorship grow for a little more until he's ready to take on that role. Of course, at being in high school, he's not ready to be Iron Man, but it takes time as he's mentoring him. But exactly. Why don't we get somebody who's ready right now to be Iron Man? After Avengers 4, I'm pretty sure Downey Jr. is gone, so we need someone to step up and take that mantle like right when that's done. So let's get a new character. Let's get a new perspective. Like we already, well, already The audience want to see a new character. We love the Iron Man we have currently. I don't think the audience would be that down with just the random People want no new characters all the time. Of. Look at the Guardian. Look at Doctor Strange. People are open to seeing new characters as long as they're done well. Yeah, but it's not like they're replacing their favorite character. You ask anyone on the street who's your favorite Avenger, they're going to say like... Captain America or Iron Man, and uh, Captain people America people are fine with them, with them killing Han Solo just because they're getting rid of a major character doesn't mean people won't turn. Out. But they didn't like, replace him with another Han Solo who's saying I'm Han Solo now. Oh, they're, they're replacing him with someone else. That's a prequel. That's a prequel. It's not like someone else. Matter, saying, I'm Han Solo now. The character is still Han Solo. You're having another person be Iron Man, which we are not used to. Spider Man is a well, character. Is not, my generation personally is in love with the character. Like in my case, you killed Tony Stark. He's a different generation Spider Man. If you're gonna if you're gonna replace Tony Stark, you need to do something. You need to do something different. You need to do something that we haven't seen before. Can't Let's get a new Robert character. Downey Jr. with um, this Eddie March. We don't know who that character is. I don't. If we want, we didn't know Tony Stark was well, 2008, and look at that turned out. We need. To we don't know who Eddie and we we we'll we'll trust with the role. Oh, we don't trust that person yet. You can trust Spider Man with that role. No, no. Why though? We already we already seen that. He's that, that, he that wants to be our. We've, no, he wants to be an Avenger. He's about being an Avenger, just like he wants to be Iron Man. And we've already seen that dynamic done. Him, and, and and in Iron Man 2, he is looking up to Iron Man. He's like wearing that, that doesn't mask. Mean he wants to, he looks up to Iron Man. He wants to be an Avenger. And even at the end of the movie, he, he turns down his Iron Man suit. He, no, he, but he takes it up again later when he absolutely because he him. Because he's going to die. He's going to die if he doesn't. But either way, look. My, my whole thing is, like, we've already seen that dynamic Peter Parker. Let's get something new. Like, is, Mar- is Marvel Cinematic Universe going to keep going way past exactly. 2020? Let's see someone we new, new thing with new characters. So let's try Spider-Man. to get a new character with a new dynamic, with a new point of view in this universe, and let's bring in the Keith Stanfield, who is on the up and is going to be it's, uh, on the verge of becoming a major, major, major star. He's not a big enough name to leave the to leave. Neither was Robert Downey Jr. He's a great actor. Neither was Chris Hemsworth. Neither was anybody that, like, almost anybody that They're Guardians. not they leading the Avengers, though. They Iron Man is the most important character. Iron Man, what, what he does, I don't know if the modern audience is going to accept that change. I think the modern audience would absolutely accept Peter Parker, who's a character. People, people accepted that. Him. People accepted a weird ass crazy space team. People are willing to accept new crazy crap. But if it's you not do like it well. we had a space team before with Guardians that they randomly replaced with a new unknown character that we did not know before. That's the first iteration of Guardians we've but seen. But look, narrative, narrative iteration speaking, of Spider Man. Like, it doesn't matter the type of family. Like Miles Morales. People are going to get pissed no matter how we do it. 
this is how we put Miles Morales in Spider-Man. We put Peter Parker in Iron Man. We get the best of both worlds as people love those two characters and we want to see them together. There's but not the whole, a the whole thing that makes Rob Miles Morales in Iron Man. In a world, Peter Parker doesn't exist. Like, that's what makes that character so interesting. That's what makes him so compelling. You put him in Peter it's Parker. It's comic book room, stuff has to change it's gonna sometimes. Be so, right? like, hard. It's going to be so, like, hard. It's so jarring. It's so hard to watch. Things change with the universe. You, you adapt yes, stuff differently. Yes, things change. Things change. Tony Stark is gone. Replace him. Audience are going to Spider-Man is not Iron Man in the comics, so I'm changing stuff for it. I, I didn't get that last point. What'd you say? 45 seconds. I don't. I think you said time. 45 seconds. 25 but the point seconds. is, like, the whole the whole idea of, like, the audience is unwilling to change. Like, people are willing to accept different things. People are willing to accept something new. Just because, like, Tony Stark isn't Iron Man anymore, it, it doesn't matter. Like, as long as you tell a... As long as you, like, to make do it well, people are going to, like, turn out to it just fine. So I don't think I don't think the fact that it's a new character we've never seen before. I don't think that matters. I, I think I, I think I like keeping Peter Parker as Spider Man rather than making him just a brand new character for the sake of oh we need to replace someone and we gotta keep him in the universe. Oh let's make Peter Parker. But he's being around. mentored to bring him to that role. What was that? He's no, his arc is not building up to that role. His arc is building up to him coming an Avenger. Like he never states that he wants to be Iron Man in any of those movies. He says that he wants to be Avenger. He wants to be a hero. There's a reason he that Iron Man is mentoring him, not Captain America, not Hulk, Fine. not Black Widow. There's a reason. All right, guys, those were great arguments. Great arguments. Um, you guys should both be proud on those ones because it's n not a tough thing. It's not an easy thing to do to replace somebody who's been in damn near every single every single one of them. So I, uh, I absolutely respect your guys' opinions on this one. You guys have got one minute, and we're going to start with Chance this time around. Okay, I think the idea of replacing Tone, of replacing Peter Parker with Tone, but uh, replacing Tony Stark with Peter Parker is just super, super lazy. And I think it's kind of, it, it kind of be like the MCU refusing to just try anything new. And I feel like people will accept change as long as it's not, as long as it's done well. I feel like until Tony Stark's at the end of his ropes, he can't do it forever. So you need to get somebody, you need to get someone like completely different with a completely different point of view, with a completely different outlook on the universe in this Iron Man role. And that's Eddie March. He's not someone who's nearly the complete opposite of Tony Stark. He's someone who just wants to do good. He's someone who doesn't come from money. He's not a super genius. It'd be really interesting to see a point of view of a guy like that in this movie. He's not like, he's not any special power. He doesn't have any special training. He's just an, he's just like your average guy. And I think that could be like if we're gonna like keep going with the universe, we gotta keep we gotta try things new. We gotta try new things. We gotta take risks. We gotta try and do something different. And I think putting Peter Parker in the Iron Man suit is gonna be lazy. Putting Eddie Martha Iron Man suit from a narrative standpoint it doesn't matter what the fans think. From a narrative standpoint, that makes that makes the most sense. Okay, and Linus. From a narrative standpoint, Peter Parker being the new Iron Man absolutely makes the new, most sense. And if saying Robert Downey Jr. say he doesn't make it past I Avengers 4 or whatever, we don't know that at this point. But if he doesn't and we just have some random character come in, the audience wouldn't be behind it and we don't have the knowing this character before. If we knew the character before and he was built up to it, sure, that might work well. But Peter Parker is literally being mentored by him. He's kind of like Tony Stark doesn't have a kid, but he's kind of like guiding him to be sort of his son and taking up the honor he wears an iron man mask when he's doing iron man and iron man 2 that's canon to be that was peter parker at the time and my, my generation is a huge fan of tom holland spider-man and just seeing him in this role is we're going to be the people who's going to continue watching these films and having spider-man as the lead of the role as iron man that would be awesome for all of us to see we have other spider-mans that would fit perfectly in the role that we don't need the development well no one really knows who eddie march is if you put miles morales in there people will know who that is as spider-man making two great characters eddie march can be there as another role but i think it needs development before he randomly just slides in where i think spider-man could slide in much more organically and take over the role for iron man and lead the avengers perfectly is that what he's kind of being mapped out to do okay really really good strong final points you guys um Wow, you guys aren't making this easy on me whatsoever. All right, guys. Uh, you guys gave me a ton to think about here. Um, I am, of course, of, of two minds on this just because I, I – I, Linus, you said something very, very uh, late into your argument that really made uh, – put a, an internal smile in my fa on my face. Um, and Chance mm – -hmm. I love the fact that you're you're. I, I love the fact. I, I love the fact that a you 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 brought up Eddie March, whom I love uh, and I think is a is a great character. Um, I 
I have to go with Chance on this. I have to give Chance a point on this one. Um, but I will say, I will say this, Linus, who were this close to winning this one because of the Peter into Iron Man and Miles Morales into the Parker into the into the Spider Man suit. That's a damn good idea, and it was right there. That it, it was right there. But in the end. I think with what everything is happening with this final this final phase that we were we just uh, most of us just saw a movie uh, that was in there. Um, I think that the MCU is going to change and it's going to change rather drastically. I don't think the fans are going to care too much. I think they're just going to I think they're just going to roll into it. And I think that they're going to accept whatever is there. So in that uh, being said, Chance, you have just scored your second point in this match, which moves you on to the final question against Henry. Linus, uh, I'm going to give you the opportunity here just to, uh, uh, to pimp anything else, to promote anything that you might be doing right now, and to, to give your final thoughts on this match. Uh, yeah, this is a great match. These two are both very worthy competitors that could both be fighting for the belt. Um, like I said, I didn't really have much to lose with this match, and maybe I should have <laughs> chosen a more <laughs> arguable answer for question one, but um, this was a tough match for, sh for sure, and um, it's, it was fun arguing against these people. I know this is not a great showing for myself, but I had a fun time here. Both of you are a great job. Um, plug, buy the Above the Line t-shirt on T Public at the Schmodown shirt, because I want more <laughs> That's my plug. <laughs> you can find me at Twitter at Linus at the Linus Babcock and or Linus Schmodown. And um, for my next match here, I'm hoping it's not a triple threat because that's what I've done for my last three matches here. And six questions is a lot to prepare for. And I hopefully I don't have to do that next. And I think our records match up. So if it works out, Zach Ford, I want to play you in a Muppet match. I know Aaron, <laughs> Aaron probably doesn't want that. But I'm gonna Muppet match Zach Ford. Come on. Hey, that's you know what? That's a great idea, and I think you two are so well matched, uh, and especially in that because you guys are teammates. So yeah, that's uh, that's that's great. And by the way, you mentioned that you wish you had a bit of time, you know, or a better chance to prepare for the first question. As far as I'm concerned, you put Scarlet Witch in there, and if if anything that we've seen recently has proven, Scarlet Witch is one of the most powerful Avengers out there. So you having her on your team was an absolute slam dunk in my mind. But thanks again, Linus. You did great. Uh, I I really appreciate it. You've done. You're doing something that I, I personally just don't even have the stones to do myself. So way to go. I appreciate you coming on today. Well, thank you. All right, guys, we are back, and we are down to our final two. Chance and Henry both scored two points each, and they uh, knocked out the unfortunate uh, third-place finisher, Linus Babcock, on this one. But we are here for these two titanic competitors to face off against each other with our question number five. And that question is, who is the absolute best casting choice for the adult version of any of the Losers Club from the movie It. Pick one kid and talk about their adult choice. Characters can be picked more than once, but actors cannot. So you can pick the same character, but you have to choose a different actor for it. And we are going to start with Henry. All right, so when you think of the best absolute choice for casting, you think of multiple things. The, the best character for the upcoming movie, the best uh, possibilities for that character, and the best actor. And when you think, and when you think of this character that I'm choosing, this, this character can go in different um, facets as far as personality and direction. And I'm and I'm picking an actor that can cover any direction that they would go with it. I'm picking uh, an actor that has played a major league baseball player, that has played a jazz, you know, musicianist, that has played a uh, panther of the black formation. Um, I'm picking uh, Chadwick Boseman to play the Dan character. Brown is punk, by the way. <laughs> you know, whatever to play the character of Mike. And I'm gonna um, leave it for the rest for the open argument, but. Chadwick Boseman is going to play my mic. Awesome. As uh, 
as somebody, and I'm just going to interject in the middle here, as somebody who is not a horror fan, as you all know, uh, this actual horror movie is one of my favorites. Uh, I've watched the TV version as many times as I can stand it, and I've watched the new version, to everybody's surprise, four times now. So, Holy shit, um, wow. Damn. I know. So this, que this question for me is you guys better bring it because I know it. So it's all good. Chance, it's your turn. Who are you picking from the Losers Club? All right. So coming in, it's the only, the only one that's cast was uh, Jessica Chastain, who I think is a good choice. But again, look at the rest of the kids. And my favorite, my favorite of the entire Losers Club is the character of uh, Richie. I almost, I almost yes. called him Mike because of Stranger Things. Richie. Yes. So uh, I had to think of the perfect casting choice for that one. And uh, there's an actor already in talks, but I'm not going with that one. I'm actually going to say Jason Bateman for Richie. And uh, you'll give Jason Bateman, of course, from, uh, you know, Best Development, Ozark, uh, most recently Game Night, so many great stuff. I think the dude is a great actor, and I think he really best fits this role. So that's... I'll say, and like Henry, I'll say the rest for the open forum. Nice. All right. You guys have both picked excellent, excellent actors, and you've both picked two of my actual favorite characters in the movie. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this. Let's try to keep it to a uh, dull more and your five minutes. Hold on. Sorry. I would like to use the, the given the stakes. I want to do my uh, time extension. One minute. Let's make it six. All That's right. Fine. Okay. As soon as Henry's off the phone, we will. My uh, alarm went off for uh, there will be trivia match. We're about to record, so <laughs> let me know. All right, guys. So we are going to. I am going to reset this, and I'm going to go zero. And we are going to start this six-minute extended time fight right now. So you're okay, you're issue with you like with Mike in the first in the first losers club in the first part of the it movie I think like he's relegated he his part is severely diminished and if they carry that over to the second it it doesn't matter who you put in that role that character of Mike is just gonna be a bit part and Chadwick Bose like Chadwick Boseman he's like it doesn't matter if you put him in that movie he's not gonna add very much to it. Yeah, but your issue with Richie is he had too much to do in that opening movie. So they're they're either going to make it the Richie story in parts one and two and just um overshadow the other characters, or they're gonna do exactly no, I, what they I, did I with what they're going to do. No, the they're gonna do no, exactly they, what they, they did with Mike in the first movie. Because he stands out more. No, because that that's the whole point of his character. He was such a jerk in, in the first one. He's growing up and he's gonna mature in the in the in the next one. So he's not gonna have as much to do. Whereas Mike, they didn't give him anything to do. And in the based on the book and the actual source material, Mike is the one that brings the losers club together when they become adults. So when you pick a character, you want someone who can lead the charge. You want someone who can but be if they bring the king of Wakanda. Chadwick Boseman. If yeah, they bring him back and relegate to the black round, it doesn't matter. And Chadwick Boseman, look, he's a great actor, he's a great choice. But what does he bring? Like we're talking about who's the best choice. What does he bring to the table that you would tell Edgy Forrest, Sterling K. Brown, Don Cheadle, Jeffrey Wright, and Jamie Foxx could not? He he's proving he's gonna prove that he can actually be the leader of this group, that he can bring them together. A, a group of friends that haven't seen each so other in over 20 gonna, years. He's, he's gonna, gonna be the reason that's gonna bring them together and they're gonna they're gonna fight this monster together because most of them aren't gonna believe, most of them aren't gonna aren't, aren't gonna they're gonna forget. But, they're but gonna again, become adults, and he's gonna bring them together. The he's gonna choice. be the leader. Not, not, he's, not the character the casting choice. What does Chadwick Boseman that any of any of these actors just brought up? Don't. He's gonna. He has that automatic leadership ability. He's a, he's gonna be able to capture that, that character of Mike of what we expect. He's, he's proven that he can play real life characters and real um source material. So but he's going to encapsulate that character. You're going to see Mike on screen. You're not going to see Mark's character, which is what you need for Mike. Because like from earlier, forward, you find that he's going to be a bit of a junkie when he finds about the whole ritual of chew thing. And we've never seen Chadwick Boseman play someone that's like really unhinged, really dark, really disturbed. I, like we don't know that's in his wheelhouse. Plus, yeah, he does because like, even, like, even in Black Panther, he has that vengeance, he has that darkness, that grittiness to him. Not, not really. He, he doesn't really have a darkness. He has a sense of self importance. He doesn't have a darkness, but you also yeah, but you can just tell he, ha he has that ability yeah, to get there. He just, the character hasn't been like, necessary. Yeah, like he's shown that he has range. He's shown that he can do anything. Chadwick and then Bozeman, when you have Jason Bateman as Richie, he's not going to be able to do anything in that movie. He's he, he 41, but he really is 27. 
Like he doesn't. He hasn't. Re- he doesn't have that gravity. He doesn't have that elderly feel to him. But when and you have Jason Bateman, Bateman, you you don't know what he's going to do. He's not going to be able to do anything. Why? He's either he's either going to retread what he did in the first movie and just have he's going to become Drax in the MCU and just be become a side character and just dump jokes and he's just going to take everyone out of the movie. But that's what Richie. That's what Richie is. He's gonna, the question is best casting choice. Richie. Yeah, is, but that's is the point. He's not going to have anything to do, so anybody can play Richie. It doesn't matter. Not one liners, dark and disturbed. That's Jason Bateman. We've seen him do that in the gift. We've seen him do that in Ozark. We've seen him do that in Game Night where he's throwing yeah, out one but, it, but in those movies, he's but the character is not gonna have anything to do. So anybody can play the character of Richie in the in the second one. Anyone can Everyone, play Mike they're, too. They're gonna, they're gonna give, Mike, you gotta you gotta believe that somebody's actually gonna bring these characters together and it's actually gonna be the new leader of it, the face of well, the, the losers team. club. And he's gonna have the biggest arc well, we because in the first really one, gonna do that. Just because he makes character's just because arc he is gonna go down. Phone call doesn't mean he's gonna be the one that unites the whole thing, even like within the story of the in the, in, 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 in the movie, he, he can literally go part. to different towns because they're going to move away. You can maybe have cutscenes where he goes to different towns, br- physically brings them together. It's going to be more than a phone call because most of them are going to stop no, believing because like, they're that's becoming that's adults. And you know how Bill, Stephen King like movies are. When Once they, they grow up, the Bill they, is still the leader of that crew. So, so Chadwick Boseman as Mike, he's not going to be the leader of the crew. That's still going to go to Bill. That's still no Paul because and, 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 and he's going to fall in love with Beverly. He's going to lose that leadership ability because he's going to have that Beverly thing going. So you're going to someone's got to take over the mantle. We got to talk about the casting choice. We got to have the casting. Chad Bozeman's great, but there are like tons of people you can plug and play in that role. Same Jason thing with Richie because he has nothing to do. You you just talk about the casting, but the point of perfect I'm not casting is story. About what they have to do. We're talking about the casting choice. Yeah, but 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 the point of perfect casting is what they have to do. Why would he be good? Well, we don't know that. We're just gonna have dumb jokes. Anybody can do character. the fact that I Dave Bautista, a wrestler, is able to encapsulate the character of Drax so well is because he doesn't bad ass. He's like junior ass. Jokes. He's just a side character. He's just a, he's just a cartoon, and that's all Richie's gonna be in the he's next one. He's just a cartoon. Any actor can be a cartoon. That is not that does nothing. He's not a cartoon. No, he's like a Chadwick Boseman is gonna be able to bring that gravitas of leadership, that darkness. He's gonna be able to show the backstory because you know there's gonna be flashbacks of what happened in the twenty years. You know it's gonna have jump cuts from bringing together all the characters. Chadwick Boseman is going to we be able to make we you don't believe that, all. that you we, need we to come no back and fight happen. Pennywise. That is going to be super important. Where Jason Bateman, he's just going to be satire. He's just going to be a cartoon. No, I think that's completely that's completely untrue. Like the character version, the first movie, like he he's like the junior version of ass. Like he's he's ca- he's cowardly until he, he's cowardly until he's not. And he throws out, he's all got all the best one liner. He's that he's that character that we all look up to that we all want to be in. Yeah, that but situation. that was as a kid. But once you come as an adult, he's not going to have anything to do. So no, what is like, what is he's in, in the book? He is that actor to, 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 to satisfy that, that choice. What it, what does it matter? Well, what would be the difference than you have you know like a Sam Rockwell or someone being that witty smart character? It's not going to be any different. If anything, it's no, not as good. Sam, I would rather have Sam Rockwell one liner as Richie. I would rather have Sam Rockwell as Richie. He's the master of the one liner. He's the master of the underhand. A joke. You need someone who can just throw out a bit yeah, of but humor that's a reach and just move on in the, the first movie. So that's just going to be repetitive, and it's just going to be boring. You're not. It's not going to be as funny because it's only shocking and funny as with Richie as a kid. Because you had no, uh, absolutely, Wolf, absolutely Wolf. not. You, you, you need that. Like, you have so many characters that are going to be like dark and tormented and serious. You need someone that's going to have that. Like, someone's going to have that comedy relief, and that's why. That's why you bring in Richie. That's why you bring in someone like Jason Bateman who can handle that. Who can handle the dark stuff and handle. Sorry, you quit. That's time. Woo! I lost Woo! my voice. Shit. We yelled. That was awesome. Okay, everybody. So that was the round of the. That was the extended six minute round because Henry used his uh, his extension minute. So we had Smartly. six minutes of arguing um, uh, about this last question, and it was fantastic to watch these two people perform and and argue their point. They each get a final minute to tell me what they, uh, how they want this to end up and to prove to me their point is what exactly is what should happen. So we are going to start with Chance. So I based my argument for this question on who is the best, uh, they were, best choice to play uh, the one of the Adult Losers Club. And I'm basing it as far as how we know. We don't know how they're going to be doing in the second movie. We don't know what's going to happen in the second movie. Now, Mike, he was, to- he was relegated to just the, to- just the token black kid who is just there because he has to be or Booker is a good piss. Chad Bill's a great actor, but like I said in the movie, there's like nothing he brings to the table that she would tell Edgy Forrest, Charlie K. Brown, Don Shield, or Jeffrey Wright, or like tons of other uh up, like uh middle-aged black actors can bring this role. Like it doesn't have to be she would tell Edgy Forrest. We never we never it doesn't have to be Chad Bill's, but we've never seen that that's in his wheelhouse. 
Jason Bateman, like Richie is a is one of the he's my favorite of Blue's Club. I think like he's my favorite because he's a wisecracking, cowardly badass. Kind of like he's kind of like a smaller version of I just say, he's always a smaller version of Ash. And you need someone who can embody that darkness. You need someone that can embody that humor very well and do it at the same time. And that is Jason Bateman. We've seen him do it in countless roles like Ozark, where the gift we can do in that darkness, or you look at something like Rest of Development or a uh, game that horrible bosses, where he can just throw out that humor and like just throw out a one liner, not draw attention to it, and just keep the scene moving. Like you need, like he is absolutely perfect for the role of Richie. I'm not Rich, yeah, Richie. He's perfect for that role, and you need someone who can ride that fine line between dark and humorous really well. I think Jason Bateman is the guy. <clears throat> All right, perfect chance. Thanks so much for that, Henry. Your minute to prove why your choice is best starts now. So you asked the question, what is the difference between guys like Ch Chia Weddle at GF4 and Sterling K. Brown, for example? Well, here's the difference. Chia Weddle at GF4 in the MCU plays um, Modar or Modor, whatever his name is, a side oh, no. character. Sterling K. Brown plays um, um, Black Panther's uncle, a side character. Chadwick Boseman was picked to play the lead, Black Panther. He's showing that he can lead a cast and crew in his own movie in Black Panther, which ultimately became a billion-dollar movie. Now he's a face. In in, uh, in Civil War, he came out of nowhere, and he was every he was like the snap of a finger, no pun intended, everyone's favorite character in that movie. So he's shown that he can be a face and a leader of a group. The difference between... He's, you know, the difference between him and Jason Bateman, nobody cares about Jason Bateman as a lead. And if you want Jason Bateman, if you want Richie's character to be the lead of this movie, then it's just going to be a retread of what he was in the second movie. And if he's going to be a little deeper and um, darker and different and more dynamic, nobody's going to really care because they don't look at Jason Bateman as an actor or as a character um, portrayal. They look at Chadwick Boseman because he's shown that he can play real life characters and he showed that he can play real life source material characters. Chadwick Boseman is going to be the perfect Mike and Jason Bateman's character for Richie could just be anybody because they're not going to handle his character in a way that's going to be that interesting. Can I make it up? Can I make the off the argument like like last minute thought? You say she was where can't let can't lead a movie. Look at uh, he's, he, look at Twelve Years a Slave if you want if you want proof. You're, you're, you're basing your stuff like about what I said about about MCU stuff, but these guys have that leading leading roles outside of this. All right, holy moly, guys, we have just had an absolute battle here. Uh, I want to before any decisions have been rendered at this point i want to say thank you to both henry and chance for uh for fighting and uh, and battlegrounding so much uh so much passion during this uh during this event or this uh, this question here uh and the whole match um so my thoughts so far on this particular question you guys did a great job of 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 of, of arguing your your point but there was a point that was that was made that wasn't part of the question. Uh, we're not looking for a leader of the Losers Club. We're looking for the actual best casting decision on the character. And as much as I love this particular actor, like I've seen a lot of his earlier movies and he is fantastic. Uh, the casting choice of Jason Bateman as um, as Richie is a better ch casting choice than Chadwick Boseman for um, uh, for for Mike. Um, based on I just uh, based on the fact that it, I just I think he's just too big of a I think he's too big now, and I don't think Jason Bateman is. Um, and so I think that the choice has to be made with that third point has to go to chance for holy shit for picking the better casting choice for that particular movie. We weren't looking for a new leader, and if we were looking for a new leader, then Chadwick Boseman is definitely the better leader out of him and Jason Bateman. But pure casting decision based on the character in the movie in the movie. And the and and the actor portraying that character, Jason Bateman is going to be able to bring that wry sense of humor, that dark sense of humor. Um, whereas I think that Chadwick would just be wasted in the role. Just just so, like Ch just like Chosen Jacobs in the first one. <laughs> correct. So that's that's my decision, guys. So we have a final score of three to two by the narrowest of margins for Chance the Titan Ellison. Henry, I, I know at some point the Punisher is going to come out and it's going to take me down at some point. 
for for this decision but let's get your thoughts uh, on how you think i thought you played today and uh where you thought things might have gone a little wrong for you uh <laughs> uh yeah and your answer cannot be choosing me as the judge <laughs> no you you did a good job although i think you missed the point in that last question when i said the whole point of the second movie is mike becomes the, he gets them all together ultimately making him a leader and that's why i was harping on that point but neither here nor there it could have gone either way, and I'm not mad at this. Well, I'm super mad. I'm fucking angry at this decision. But I, I definitely understand, and uh, um, justice for Henry. Just, just for Henry. Hashtag. Hashtag. There it is right there. All right, Chance, uh, you pulled off this one. It was by the, the narrowest of margins. There was a couple of, uh, there was a couple of questions early on um, that, 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 uh, that, 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 could have went your way, but just didn't this time around. But in the end, you pulled it out. Um, I, I I would not want to be in between either one of you two to fight these movies out because I think you guys are two of the best that I've ever seen. So, Chance, what do you got to say? What do you got to plug? What do you got to do? This this was nuts. I I, I didn't think I was going to come in and beat Henry because he's two and zero. I know how just how good arguing Henry is. But nevertheless, he put up a great fight. He pushed me to my limits. And, yeah, I got to give it up to him for having a great opponent. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, whoever I have to take on next. And uh, as far as plugs I had, uh, Colonial Media, I do stuff on I, the channel that Sandy and I both work on. Don't call by, I swear. Uh, yeah, the Colonial Media channel I work on, um, World of Movie Games, where this is going on where I do tons of stuff. Uh, I'll Twitter and Instagram at ChanceWars underscore 91. Uh, Stardust star, star and Letterboxd, Chance T83, and also follow my YouTube channel at Chance the Critic, where I do reviews and such all the time. And here come the comments. <laughs> I, I was just happy to be here, guys. My name, as always, is Sandy the Sandman Robinson. I am. You can find me anywhere on Full Metal Media. You can find me uh, hosting and playing in the Worldwide Movie Games uh, There Will Be Trivia Team Tournament and hosting That's matches long. here and there. Yeah, and uh, you know, <laughs> and you can see me doing some stuff with Take Three as well, reactions and 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 posting stuff. So you can find me all kinds of places. So as I always try to say, have fun, watch movies.